The Biblical Truth of our Hymn, today, number 51 of our lesson, Christ Returning. Now, the writer is H.L. Turner, and there's no information about this gentleman or woman. Uh, we don't know. But Christ Returning. It may be at morn, when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus, hey, look at that, found Jesus in a hymn, J-E-S-U-S, -S, will come in the fullness of glory to receive, the, receive from the world his own. What truth? Rapture. When Jesus Christ will meet us in the air, when the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that remain shall be caught up together in the clouds, be parting out of this world forever. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I'm waiting for Jesus to come and take care of us. It may be at midnight, excuse me, it may be at midday, it may be at twilight, it may be per chance, that blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. One thing about this unknown author of this hymn, he is not dating the rapture. He could come in the morning. He could come at midday. What glory thing is that any moment, even right now, this video may just keep on playing for an hour with me being gone one moment one time when when the lord hears here's god says go get your bride would it be in the morning will be midday afternoon whatever time it is christians christians not the media christians not the religious christians but those that have been purchased by the blood of the lord jesus christ will be called up hither what a glorious time. What a time that could be any moment this hymn reminds you of. Any minute. And if not right now, later. While hosts cry Hosanna from heaven, descending with glorified saints and the angels attending with grace on his brow, like a halo of glory, will Jesus receive his own. That's going to probably be a celebration in heaven. That we're going to meet, maybe. The fact is, here they all come. We have been dying Christians one by one, sometimes by pairs, sometimes multitudes. And to die to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And then that one great moment when the entire church comes home, capital H forever for glory forever last, lasting that's gonna be a shout in heaven you know the bible says in luke chapter 15 that the angels shout and, and have a a celebration when one sinner repents not over a football being thrown through a you know into an end zone not a baseball being hit not somebody receiving a award for acting and accuracy no, they repent and they rejoice to the fact that a man has gotten saved. And what greater joy to have all the body of Christ, all the people they have been rejoicing over, are now come home in one body. Now to join them in glory before God in the Lord Jesus Christ forever. What a time that's going to be. You know, we think it's exciting and it should be for Christians that Jesus is going to come for us all. Do you ever think about what heaven's point of view is? That he, here they are. Here's the ones we've been watching. Here's the ones we've been shouting about. Here's the ones that God's been bragging about before Satan. And imagine what God's going to feel. Here they are. We're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And then after the, after the great white throne judgment, and he's going to wipe away our tears. We get a brand new body, sinless. He, we will be the creation that God created us to be. Forever to glorify God, our creator, our, our lover, our 
Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, our wonderful of all wonderful, our blessed hope. Imagine what it would be for God to have us finally to be what he wanted us to be. Without no more Satan, without no more fallen angels, without sin, without death, but forever. That's going to be pleasing the celebration of God himself. God had never intended men to sin. God never intended to put man into hell. That's man. Oh joy, oh delight, should we go without dying? <laughs> That'd be interesting. You ever thought about when the rapture would happen? I hope it happens. You ever get that, that uneasy feeling in your stomach? Have you been on a roller coaster? And you're coming up over the edge and your stomach's like, whoa, you know, you're going to feel everything coming up. When the rapture happens, we're going up and everything in our stomach staying down. All guts and all that stays here, and our clothing stays here. But we, our body, goes up. And, oh, you, know, you, ever, you ever been greatly surprised by somebody? And that just, oh, man, that's what's going to be at the rapture. Imagine that moment when we, I, 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 I don't can't picture, but if we recognize people in the clouds, you imagine that moment, I'm going to see my mom. I haven't seen my mom. 86, 87, maybe longer. She's safe. I got a wife up in heaven, 2010. We got a child that was a uh, miscarriage. I got grandma and grandpa. I got people I witnessed to. I got people I handed out tracks. I got people probably waiting for me in the clouds. I had no idea they were going to be there. I'm going to probably be shocked to find people there that I did not know would be there, would not even expect them to be there. And then I'm going to find the upsetting thing, you know, tears are not wiped away to Revelation 20. I'm going to find the upsetting thing, but I'm not going to find that person I expected to be there. We're going to find those that we, we want to see. We're going to find those we didn't expect to see. We're going to find those who we would not ever thought to see, I mean, when you support missionaries, there are going to be people meeting the clouds at the rapture that they were there because of your support. And then we're going to be surprised when we find out that, oh, they're not there. I thought they were saved. I had no idea that they weren't. All tears are wiped away, Revelation 20. You know, it proven to a fact is when we are raptured, dead or alive, that is the entire body of Jesus Christ. And hopefully we'll know each other, hopefully we'll see each other and know who we are. And we take those that are not there in the clouds, that do not come up in the rapture, in the church age. I mean, I'm not talking about before the church age. I'm not talking about the old time. I'm talking about in the church age. People we know. And when we see them at the great white throne judgment. They are hopeless. If they are the great white throne judgment living in the church age. Their name is not going to be in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You went up in the rapture. Now maybe if, if, the, if the church went up today to rapture. And the person that you love went through the tribulation period and did what a tribulation uh, saint is supposed to do, maybe. But nations are what they've done to Jesus. Nations are what they've done to the Jews that Jesus takes personally. And we're going to see those that we didn't see in the clouds one day standing before God and Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. As they are cast out in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Then Revelation 20. God wipe away our tears. So that means we're going to cry at the great white throne judgment when we see parents, siblings, children, grandparents, great friends, people we thought who were Christians. get tossed off into the lake of fire to burn. I, I, I don't want to put a wet cloth on the rapture, but we got to think about this. 
the Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel. What what greater ambition for you and for me to tell you go out and preach the gospel? Is, let's get our family friends in the rapture by telling them what, how to be saved. I never thought that my mom would ever got saved. I even have doubts about my dad. But he's still living. There's that great possibility he'll get saved. But, I mean, I witnessed that my dad, and he's lost right now. And if the Lord came today, amen, glory to God, I've done what I could. There are people that are going up in the rapture because I had some part in it. Not all, I didn't save them. But I had some part, and some are not going to understand what I'm saying, and some will. I've had a part in the planting or the watering of the seed. And we'll all join the angels. Imagine missionaries that you help and support. And the people that were there, you never ever met in the day in your life. You, and there you are all together before the angels, before God and Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm sad that people are going to hell in the lake of fire, but I'm also overjoyed that I'm going up in the clouds. I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I've had part in people's lives to get saved and got right with the Lord. I'm overjoyed, please. But I'm still living today and still witnessing. My witnessing ain't done till I die or rapture. And yours ought not to be either. Oh, joy! Boy, Sally, you put a big wet cloth on our joy. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Right now. God, If God ever gave me a wish right now, we're going. Joy. No more pain, no more suffering. I'm tired of hospitals. I had a wife die of breast cancer. She died in my arms. Both my wives have been in hospitals. I've been in hospitals. Diabetes. Amputated toe. Feet that don't work right. Neuropathy. Don't feel well. Get hot, get cold. I'm gonna be sick. Sometime in the future I'll be sick. Who knows what the future holds for my medical? Probably not too well. My mom has MS suffering. What joy will be if the Lord came? And that all those sicknesses are gone and left behind. I remember a testimony when I was first saved in 1987, the church I was going to. There was a man in a wheelchair and he lost his legs. And he, he took a liking to me, thank God. And he'd tell me, I, I don't know how often he tells me, he tell me, I remember the first time, he's like, oh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to run around. I looked at him like, I was newly saved newborn baby that I like before I knew about the new body I like buddy there's something wrong with you oh there's nothing wrong with him there was something wrong with me I hadn't learned and grown yet but I've grown and, and learned to know you know what my feet are not going to hurt no more in glory they're not going to feel like that someone's driving a nail through it they're not going to feel like I'm walking on a rock they're not going to be numb. They're not going to feel like I'm wearing steel socks. My fingers are my feelings. My fingers are going to come back. I'm not ever going to say anything wrong. I'm never going to lie. I'm never going to have my sins that people don't know about. Whatever I say will be the truth, and whoever I say it to will be pleased. You know, it gets tiring to have a public ministry and tell people about hell and tell people about Jesus. And they just outright reject it. My heart breaks that they won't receive Christ. And then my heart breaks that they're blaspheming God. 
I'm going to the place where ever, whatever I do will be always right, will always be correct, and the person I'm talking to will receive it. That's joy. I'm going to see Jesus. Does not that bring joy? You're finally going to meet the one that suffered and died for you. You're finally going to meet God who created you. Oh, delight. That was the explanation point. There's coming a day, and that's another hymn. Should we go without dying? <laughs> you know, I preach on the streets that death is more sure than taxes. You may die before the tax day. But even death is not sure for the Christian. We may have the rapture happen in our time, and we may go up without dying. If that will be, an, if I can say it, a ride beyond all rides that the world can't comprehend. You know, the world has these, these rides that, you know, great power for us are falling. You know, you fall straight down. And the gravity, and whoa, and feel like that. And then there's these things that, you know, you go whoosh up. Great speed, great force. But nothing's going to be able to imitate what Christ is going to do when he calls the church. And we don't even know what it's going to be like, and it's not even described. And yet there are men in the Bible who have been recorded that have been raptured. One day Enoch's, you know, walking around, talking with God. There's Enoch, you know, that, that religious fruitcake. And where'd he go? What happened to him? Where's that fruitcake? Maybe I get his lawnmower finally. He hasn't been back. And that's what we're going to be. Oh, it'd be a laugh if the rapture always ha happened on the on the church day in the church and have a have a church completely go through their service and no one disappeared. No one had when they got out of the church house. No one's realized that the Lord's called His people home. Won't be joy for them. Be joy for us. Imagine that one moment. You know you're saved. You know you're secure. You know the salvation of Jesus Christ when you're looking at the clouds and you're looking people around you say this is the church these are the people I can truly trust and wait till we get to Jesus go without dying that's a hope you know I don't fear death but I fear the way of death I don't want to be tortured I don't want to burn I don't want to suffocate and maybe this hymn's turned into uh, you know a study not in the hymn but this about the rapture what's one thing the rapture cannot take care of in your life that you're not wanting and I guarantee there will be Christians when the rapture happens they will be highly greatly disappointed because they didn't see their team win they didn't get married they didn't achieve the highest gold on their corporate ladder or they didn't you know have the fun that they wanted to have Jesus Christ interrupted their life yes Christians. Imagine a backsliding Christian going up, least expected, and his hope wasn't Jesus, but other things. The rapture will heal all that needs to be healed in our life and to be healed of things we don't even know. You got trials, troubles, and tribulations, the rapture will handle it. You got debts, the rapture will handle it. You're alone, fearful, the rapture will handle it. No sickness, no thermometers, no medicine, no medication, no running to the pharmacy, no doctors, no coughing, nothing that causes sickness. No colds, no fevers, no, no chills. No diseases, no germs. 
No sadness. After the great white throne judgment, sorrow is wiped away. Nothing will make you sad in New Jerusalem. You'll never say goodbye anymore. You'll never face a death of a dying one. You will always have someone who's saved and know they're saved and no shadow of a doubt. Nothing will make you sad in glory. No dread of going to see Jesus again. No pressing the, the snooze button on the alarm clocks. No troubles or problems or, or burdens of the world. No crying. Again, Revelation 20. After New Jerusalem, God shall wipe away our tears. I say, the Bible says, God shall wipe away our tears. That's after Revelation 20. That's after the great white throne judgment. We're going to cry in heaven. I, I, people are going to watch what you say, but the true fact is, there will be tears when we go up. You're going to cry in the clouds when the rapture happens because you're going to look around and you're going to realize loved ones that you do not see are not there and you're going to weep because they're not there. You got to read your Bible, Revelation 20, 21, and 22. That's when our tears are wiped away. But, I mean, this saying, there's coming a time, no more tears. Caught up through the clouds to meet the Lord, the Christians of God, with the Lord. Into glory, takes us home. Jesus Christ will take us home to the Father. Jesus said, I am the way to glory. I am the truth, I have not lied to you. And I am the life. Eternal, you realize when you're caught up, whether you're dead or alive, you're forever alive. And you're not ever going to die again. And the Lord Jesus Christ will bring you to the Father. He will introduce us to the Father. When Jesus receives his own, not the world, his own. Only way you're going to meet Jesus in the clouds and in the sky is you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not going to get there by works. You're not going to get there by religion. You're not going to get there by you know, being a good person. You're going to get there by the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You've got to be a born again Christian to be his own. And then when you sing the chorus, it's, it's an oath chorus. Oh, Lord Jesus, how long? As much as a bride waiting for her wedding day. Oh, Lord, now, please. How long ere shall we shout the glad song? Christ returneth. Rapture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah, amen. Now don't get this confused with the second advent again. The rapture, Jesus does not touch the earth. He meets the church in the air. The second advent, Jesus Christ comes on the earth on a horse, king of kings and lord of lords. The rapture, Jesus comes, takes his bride away. Second Advent, Jesus Christ comes back as that lion roaring with a with a sword coming out of his mouth, and all his foes and all his enemies are defeated and conquered. Two different things between the return of Christ as the rapture and the return of Jesus Christ as the second advent. You must get that. 